Hi, good evening, and it's time for Hold No Bars with yours truly, Manzo Nadir, covering some of the political, economic, and social issues that are pertinent to you, our people. Tonight, I want to start with yesterday's press conference by the leader of the opposition, the Honorable His Excellency Dr. Bharat Chagdiyo. We play like the first 13 to 14 minutes because what President Jagdio has said during those uh, 14, 15 minutes clarifies so many questions in the minds of people and deals with the amount of distortion and misinformation which is being peddled by the state media and by members of the Elections Commission representing the coalition government. So Kevin will queue up that, and as soon as he's ready, um, we're going to listen to the first uh, 15 minutes of Bar Jagdeo's September 12th press conference. And later on in that press conference, um, he spoke about the opposition members of the Elections Commission and the government members. And with respect to the government members, he spoke of Mr. Vincent Alexander recalling that he made mention sometime in 2011 about issues of uh, election registration and all kinds of different things. But you know, I can sit at a meeting with a board and I can raise issues and if the board don't agree with me, that doesn't make me right. Good? Doesn't make me wrong. All it does is that my views weren't, weren't carried as a position of the board. That's all. And so one person can recall what they said at this board meeting and that board meeting and that commission meeting and this commission meeting. But if the members who constitute that sitting which you were at don't agree with you, then it's not carried. It's done dead. So let's hear Dr. Bharat Jagdio, lead of the opposition, um, for this first few minutes. I know a lot of you will be watching cricket, an interesting game happening right now, I think, in Jamaica. And as we speak, uh, last weekend we had the Amazon Warriors wrapping up the first three local games um, here at home at Providence, winning all three of them. They, they're off to a good start, tying with, well, I shouldn't say in terms of wins, the tie with Trinidad and Tobago Knight Riders, but we are ahead of the Trinbago team because of net run rate. So this is an interesting year for cricket. We had World Cup, we had India, now we have CPL, and then we're going back to India, so it's been great for cricket in the West Indies this year. But all of us want to bat at general and regional elections, which seems to be, be um, being delayed by the government and also by elements within the Guyana Elections Commission. So Kevin, signal me as soon as you're ready, and he is ready now. Let's listen to Bar Jagdio. Um, thank you for attending another press conference here at the Office of the Leader of the Opposition. I've always maintained that had the situation not been so tragic in Guyana, we could have all had a good laugh about what's going on because there are so many occasions to do so based on comical statements and actions by this government. But throughout all of this comedy reflects a a very pernicious, worrying uh, situation about the state of affairs in Guyana. And so before I get into talking about the most important thing for all Guyanese at this point in time, which is when are elections going to be held in Guyana, I just want to read you a quotation from Bloomberg 
to, um, they recently published an article on Guyana. And it says, when Mark Baino, the director of Guyana's Department of Energy, was a boy, he used to play cricket barefoot with his friends in his village outside Georgetown. At the end of the day, his feet, in coat, would be shiny at the bottom, he remembers. We knew oil was around. So this is the person who heads our Department of Energy, giving an interview to Bloomberg tel uh, Television. Bloomberg is read by all. It, it's a premier business economic news outlet in the world. And when your director of the Department of Energy, the head of our oil department in Guyana, makes such a, a statement, you recognize how sad the situation is about the state of affairs in our country. And I, I can imagine how people around the world and those foreigners, when they read this, what they think about Guyana, how disparaging their views would be about our country. And it is the same sort of incompetence and comical set of statements and actions on the part of the government that causes so little respect for Guyana and our people. And I suspect that this is the same sort of incompetence that allowed, that took us into the negotiation of the contracts with ExxonMobil, that they walk into the room with their maximum demand and then all the people on our side said, oh, can you give us $18 million? And then they said, we're happy to do that. And we'll, where do we have to sign? And that's the same mindset that, and, and lack of competence that govern the negotiations with Tolo when they signed a contract with Tolo after we had discovered oil and we knew we had three billion barrels of proven reserves that they would agree to a zero royalty in that contract because people keep saying it's 1%, but actually it is zero. The royalty is zero because it's recoverable. So this is the tragedy of Guyana today. Having an incompetent government in place squanders all of the opportunities for the future for all Guyanese and we have become the laughing stock of the international community. When key government officials, imagine the person who is in charge of our total energy department, policy making, makes a statement like this. His foot bottom was shiny, so he knew we had oil. My foot bottom was shiny when I played cricket too on the beach. But I don't think we had oil. Must have been I walked on some dirty thing or uh, uh, there. It, it's it's. I just had to start with that because it pains me. It pains me to see this sort of incompetence and how people think about us as Guyanese. Pains me a lot because we had a growing repetition for leading the world almost in the green, on, on green policy making and lo, lo, pioneering the sale of forest carbon around the world. That was our repetition. People used to quote what we were doing in Guyana prior to the oil and gas uh, fines. And today to be reduced to laughing stock 
because of the incompetence of the government. So I just wanted to start, and I'll return to that team at some point in time. Now, on elections, um, I have received several calls from reporters about the details of what took place at our meeting with the full commission. Um, you know earlier this week, I led a team to meet with the chairperson of GCOM, Justice Claudette Singh, and the six commissioners representing um, the government and opposition. We had a, what I thought was a good meeting, a very interactive meeting at which several questions from the commissioners representing the government were asked of me and I responded. And statements were made at the meeting that were positive. So I exited the building and I thought it was the only, the, it was a decent thing to do, not to report exactly on the content of the meeting, but allow the chairperson and GCOM to report as to what took place at that meeting. Because in the meeting itself, you had the deputy um, CEO and the CEO present. But there is one mistake that I make often. Uh, I often make the same mistake. That is, I count on the decency of people who have an agenda that they would come out and report accurately about the meeting. I did not think it was my place to do that. So to my surprise, I, said, I just came out and said a good meeting and I hope that you, the content of that meeting would be reported or, um, to the media. To my surprise, I then, when I returned to the office, I saw a press release coming out of GCOM even before the meeting with the commissioners had ended. And in that press release issued by the Secretariat, they were defending the timeline for a March elections, March next year, 2020 elections. And then subsequent to that, Vincent Alexander, a commissioner who was there at the meeting, present at the meeting, came out and said, no room for elections in this year. But at the meeting itself, in the presence of the CEO, the deputy CEO, I think the legal officer was there, and all the commissioners, including Vincent Alexander, Mr. Corbyn, and Truckman. The chairperson, in summing up, said, we thank you for coming to the meeting, and we are working towards elections before the end of the year. Not a single objection was raised at, at that point in time. Yet, we saw before the meeting ended, the Secretariat issuing, defending the timeline of March 20th, as though they were not pleased with that statement that came out of the meeting that the chairperson made. And Vincent Alexander, who was there, did not say a word, came out and said, the elections this year out of the window. And so I had counted on the decency of Vincent Alexander 
and the staff to report faithfully what was said at the meeting, but that did not happen. That is why I, did not, I just said it's a positive development in the context of what we, we've been hearing, and I hope that they reflect that. So this is the situation. We have now, the, the GCOM was supposed to meet today, this morning, I heard that after I left, the APNU nominated commissioner said that you should meet with APNU too. APNU never requested a meeting. I had requested a meeting with the, full, the commission several weeks ago. It just happened that it was scheduled only now. But I had requested that meeting. So now, at this late stage, they had to post postpone the meeting today to accommodate APNU coming to the meeting tomorrow. They couldn't even come up, come today to the meeting to accommodate them coming tomorrow. And guess what? Guess what I suspect will happen? In spite of all their public statements, and what are the public statements? We, we want elections before the end of the year. That is from APNU. AFC met with the private sector commission and issued a press release saying the protracted delay, a prolonged delay in elections is, going to, is affecting business and investment. Oh, these are the public signals that they are sending. But in spite of those public signals, they are, will go tomorrow and try to delay the timeline for elections once again. Once again, we'll delay this. So, so I have, I've seen a lot of confusing statements coming out and they use the Chronicle. Well, you know the Chronicle has had a, a remake, a new board recently and the board was put there entirely. Hi, welcome back now. I wanted to play that piece, that excerpt from Dr. Bart Jagdio's uh, press conference yesterday because um, it has contained in it, um, again, this whole issue of GCOM. So, forgetting about Mark Baino, whose feet is now a, an oil finding um, instrument, you know. <laughs> He's walking wrong and this guy shiny, he knows that there is oil there. I wonder why they didn't dig up his village and <laughs> find the oil. Uh, Mike, Mark Baino, I think President Jack Bill said it correctly, such a comic, right? But the important thing here, what Bar Jack Dio said was, look, you had a meeting with GCOM. And the meeting ended, and by the time he reached his office, the Secretariat of GCOM issued a release. And then Vincent Alexander is on the news talking about no room for elections this year. So we know that while Mr. Loinfi was admitted to the Caribbean Heart Institute, I understand, uh, later in this week. I don't know if he's back on the job. Um, but here is again that monster we have to fight. That monster head that's controlling the Secretariat of GCOM. And this puts a lot of pressure on the chairperson of GCOM, Justice Claude We spoke a lot about that last week. So what um, President Jagdeo said, look, even before I can reach my office at the end of that meeting, they the issued this release talking about a delay in elections. The only issue for me in that piece was that Jagdeo said, look, I always make one mistake. I make one mistake. I count on the decency of people who don't have decency. I count on the decency of people 
who don't have decency. He's always giving people the benefit of the doubt. And he will continue to do it. And that's the, the measure of the man who is prepared to always reach out, reach out. I know a lot of people say a lot of things about the gentleman, but, you know, that's what he is. And you heard it, and you can't hear sincerity better than what he has just said. The other issue for me now is um, what he said. He said, look, later in that interview, he said, GCOM adjourned a commission meeting to hear an unsolicited request from the PNC to meet with GCOM. And tonight, I saw <laughs> the the chairperson of the PNCR, Valda Lawrence, in the news, emerging out of that meeting, she said, she don't know why Jack Leo is pushing this elections commission to have elections. And I got so appalled because all week, what we've been hearing and seeing is this two-sided, the two-side mouth of the government. Basil Williams says to the Carter Center, we want elections, we want our elections, but we got to wait on the Elections Commission. Who went to court? Valda Lawrence says she can't understand why Jack Dio pushing for elections. Jack Dio not pushing for elections. The Constitution demands elections in three months. After no confidence vote, what you want Jack Leo to do? Sit back and say, disobey the Constitution? Is that what we expect the leader of the opposition to do? Is that what we expect the overwhelming majority of the people of this country to accept? No. And he's the leader of the opposition. All of us want to see us obey the law of the land. Last night, Sorry, yesterday I was having a conversation with the mass action protest movement, MAPEM, right? There was a parking meter group that morphed into this mass action. They started a series of protests every Thursday. And so um, yesterday I was told that all of a sudden the police told these protesters who've been par parking on the carpet in front of the Ministry of agriculture on the Central Road that you can't park there anymore. You know, you can't park there anymore. And um, threatened tow truck and the whole lot. The harassment. A few people in a protest line, right? And now you're being threatened and the constant movement of people from the office of the president uh, coming out and taking pictures and throwing remarks. You know, it's real little children's story where we got a serious country to run. And that is why we have to also be very concerned about who is leading Guyana forward. So as I started this program and I was listening to um, Dr. Jack Dio, someone sent me a little clip from me last night's um, Democratic uh, presidential um, sorry, the contenders for the Democratic nomination for the next presidential elections. And there's a guy here by the name of Terrance, T-E-R-R-A-N-C, Gina Ryan, G-E-E-N-A-R-A-I-N. -E -E so Terrance, Terrance, Gina Ryan, I don't know if that's the correct way you pronounce your name, and my apologies if I said it wrongly. Terrance Gina Ryan said to Biden, former U.S. Vice President, he said to Vice President Biden, as a child growing up in Guyana, and Biden responded and says, I know Guyana, I've been to many, I know Ghana, I've been to many parts of Africa and i visited your country. Come on, Biden, you don't know geography, man. So that was another laugh. So listening to Biden and his feet as the new scientific method for finding oil, and Biden who doesn't know geography. I had a little laugh, but then we had to get back to the serious business of elections. 
So Jagdeo says, look, these people are saying one thing. They go to the private sector and want elections, and then they come out and now make an excuse about GCOM. They are the ones delaying the elections. Last week, we went through the timeline, and we showed that five months extra is in lowing fields, um, is lowing fields projection till March 23rd. And this is something that causes tension within a person, right? It causes tension because when you're going against what your heart feels, what you know is decent, right? That amount of tension got to trigger some eruptions in the heart. Got to. But I hope Glowing Fee gets better and I hope he does the decent thing and and step down. Of course, we're going to have to deal with perhaps someone worse. But you know what? For me, we must change them until it gets done. And the chairman of the Elections Commission is going to have to make a lot of calls. She is going to have to make a lot of calls. So this issue now of the delay in the elections, um, and now the PNC is saying, look, we want elections, but I don't know why we're pushing GCOM. We're pushing GCOM because the Constitution demands after you lose a vote of no confidence or a vote of confidence, elections be held within three months. And that has been upheld throughout. Yet we see this whole issue of delays, delays, delays. So I want you tonight to weigh in on the issue of which side is more sincere. Does the opposition really want, um, sorry, does the government really want elections? Is the opposition forcing an issue which is illegal by calling for these elections to be held? You're weighing again on it. And you, I'm sure, will come down on the side of fair play and rule of law. Let's take the calls. Sorry, just missed that one. Right, so... Here we are. The lines are working. I wouldn't have to hold the um, the phone up again, but we have a phone right next to the desk, so everything should be going well. Hi, P. Good, good evening. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hello. Go ahead. Do you think that the initiative that um, the world can Go ahead again. What you said? Do you think that they should accept that? No, consider the ocean. Well, the impossible. <laughs> okay. If you want to come out, you should just give a notice mm -hmm. and come out not the same day. We can accept that. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Okay, P. But you have to accept it because that is the law. And if the head of the country can't abide by the law, how is he going to expect ordinary people to abide by the law? Harry, go ahead. You're on the ear. Good night, sir. Good evening. How are you doing, man? Can't complain at all, man. Now the president and the minister took an oath mm -hmm. at the time of sharing in. And they say they are there to uphold the constitution in the law. Uh -huh. And now they practice something different. Of what course. Call it? Hypocrisy. Well, the politicians are hypocrites. Okay, we all are. But, you know, you probably got to go for the less of a hypocrite. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, Harry. Good. So the lines are open, the calls are coming, and um, yes. But you know, we still got to operate within a law. That is the Constitution and the other laws that we pass in the House. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Okay, we lost that one. Hi. Hi, this is the Hey, how things? Good, good. I, <laughs> I played baseball with my colleagues. Mm -hmm. My feet were shiny. We, we discovered diamonds. <laughs> Wow. Here, Mark Bino is a genius. All of a sudden, he made us all into oil finding instruments. <laughs> this thing is so funny. It's amazing. It's amazing we have this kind of people running our country. <laughs> Another thing is what Golda Lauren said. She said that they've been abiding by the law since December 21st. I know. Um, you know what? Madam Chairman needs to take the ball by its horn and do what the Constitution says. Mm -hmm. Stop with 
what the commissioners and what everyone is pushing her to do. Mm -hmm. Doesn't she have the authority to do that? Well, you have to also be fair. She just took over. She has to listen to all sides. So while... Do you think she had enough time to learn and to orient herself? Well, it's not that easy, but I think we have to. And I want to believe that she's going to come down on the side of the law. I hope so. I hope so. Thanks for coming, Joe. Have a good evening. You too. Great. So we're on the air. The lines are open. The WhatsApp messages can come through also hi good evening you're on the air go ahead hello okay we seem to have lost that one a bit impatient so lines are open again let's get this hi good evening you're on the air good evening you're on the air go ahead Okay, that person wasn't ready. Hi, good evening. You're on the air? Hi. Hi, yeah. Hi good evening. Um, Go ahead. You're on the air. Good evening. Yeah, um, yeah I agree with what you say, right? It's not Mr. John Rio pushing for this election. It's the Constitution. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But the government, Mr. Grinton, now seeing that. Mm -hmm. And they were about telling people a federal line. Like, um, I was here on the radio this morning, 94.1, a mm -hmm. woman calling him, Jack Dewar and the PDP, the opposition, trying to make it to the start, telling people I've got a bunch of life. Uh -huh. But we all know, it's the government telling the people about that life. Uh -huh. She went on to say about this hydro project. We all know what the PDP was trying to bring the hydro project. Mm -hmm. So that the guy needs to get a cheaper car for the electricity. For a long, long time. Who stopped it? It was the same government when it was opposition vote against it. Mm -hmm. What did that tell any people that? Did you tell any people something else? Good. Well, thanks for calling, right? Yeah, thank you, um, Mr. Nadia. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we got the lines back going again. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening, man. Mr. Ladi, how are you doing? Quite well. And yourself? Well, going foot until when these people decide if they ain't afraid of the election, why they ain't call it. <laughs> good. Put, put, it the, uh, put it the other way around. If the PPP was in power, mm -hmm. and they have, they have the the um, coalition who was the opposition, they don't the already. I was about to say they had a mofire, bamboo fire. <laughs> Alright, Bali, we hope that things come right and we get this election soon. You know, I can't I can't I can't understand I cannot understand the advisors to his excellency, our dear beloved President Granger. Right? They can't be adv advising him about they can't be adv advising him about holding the elections according to the constitution. The only thing they could be advising him on is how to stay in power illegally. Okay, so let's get a few more uh, calls coming through. The lines are clear. Just I want to apologize to those persons coming through on the uh, telephone. On the Hi, good evening. You're on the air? Hi, good night, Mr. Nan. Good evening. I want to tell you something. Listening. Like, I'm, I'm not sure Whatever I'm going to say is true. Mm -hmm. You know this spelling of Furika? Furika mm -hmm. spelling? There yeah. is a washroom there. Uh -huh. And when you go to the boat to buy a ticket to go to the ferry, if you want to use that washroom, you have to pay $60. Wow, okay. You don't believe me? I know I believe you because they've been charging right. $20 for a long time, like 10 years oh, ago. So they've gone to 60 now. Tell you how they abuse you. If you tell them you really want to go and urinate, uh -huh. why don't you go and look somewhere else where you would go free? Is that the public transportation place they have there? Not at all. That's a caring government. Okay. So much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We know Parik is telling very well. I didn't know the cost went up to, um, to $60. It used to be $20 when I used to have to run there. Messages. Good night, Mr. Nadir. They can't remove remove low in field and the incompetent election staffers. 
for not doing their work according to the Constitution. Right? So that's the view. Maybe that's why Louis Field is behaving like that. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good night, Father. Go ahead. Hey, everyone. All is well? All right. Yeah, man. All right. So, uh, good. See you, everyone. Good, man. Take care. Uh, Hi, good evening. You're on the air? You, got to, you have to lower for me. Come. Yeah, lower that TV. Oh, it's like, nah, you got to cut him off, right? Hello. Okay, so a bit too loud. Hi, good. Okay, so, you know, the, the rule is turn down the volume, please, a bit, so that we can hear you. We don't want to cut you off and we don't want to irritate the ears of other people. So let's get your views. So you had. Um, You'd seen what President Jack Dio said, and uh, we also now have... Hi, thanks for calling back. Go ahead. Hello, good night, Mr. Uh, Manzo. Good evening. Um, I just want to highlight this. If you remember the house, the house registration is to register the thousands of Haitians. So, as to increase the Afghanist population. So, even if you have the combined of all the other races, mm -hmm. you cannot get majority. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is the only chance we have to get the afternoon on the EFC out. Uh -huh. After this election, right, there will be no need to any other races okay. to win an election. Thank you. Okay, so that's another view. Hi, good evening. And um, I saw someone reporting that uh, they were doing their political work and they came across a house with a lot of Venezuelans. And I can tell you the area and whatever, but I have it. And the Venezuelans were told that the uh, PBP want to troll to all the Venezuelans. Now, a lot of the Venezuelans are children of Guyanese parents. So if you are a child of a Guyanese spirit, you're automatically Guyanese. That's what the Constitution says. So they're peddling this information about, or this misinformation about um, the PPP. But, and then I, I just, I just saw another one about Irvan House and how much, what mansion he has and all kinds of crap. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Okay, so missed that one, we missed that one, good. Okay, so let's get back. Turn the volume down, and if you turn the volume down, we're going to be able to take your calls and then give other people an opportunity to get through. Hi, you're on the air. Hold no bars. Go ahead. Dear, how are you? Quite well. If I can recall, or I may be right, when they had a CCJ ruling, I think they had asked Mr. Marcus about the funding of GCOM. Uh -huh. If he had the funding for GCOM, and he said... November. Uh, yes. And now I'm hearing Minister Lawrence is saying that they may need additional funding. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, the government can, the Minister of Finance can use something called the Contingency Fund, which is not a fund, but it's a, it's a, it's a particular of the law that allows you to spend a certain amount of money um, without the approval of Parliament, right? I don't think they've reached that ceiling yet. So if they need more money, let's get them the money. Let's get on with the elections. Go ahead, you're on the air. Yes, sir. good night. Okay, you got turned down a little bit for me. Oh, gosh, that's horrible. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Yes, sir, not here. Tell me. Good night. You got the dictionary out? I hope you enjoyed the board the last week. It didn't move your All is good, all is good. <laughs> Everything was all right? Yes, man, you can't uh, come. Here, no, I want to look into the... Jacob story. Right? Let's look at the way in which Jacob is, is, is structured mm -hmm. and examine if there is democracy at the institutional level. Mm -hmm. The branch of Jacob that constitutes the commissioners and a chairman mm -hmm. is capable of having a balance mm -hmm. due to the numerical configuration mm -hmm. providing that the chairperson is not partisan. Right and is executing her mandate mm -hmm. in compliance with the law. Right. But let's examine the other branch of DCOM, which is the Secretariat. Exactly. 
from careful analysis, mm -hmm. it looked like this branch mm -hmm. is operating as an arm of Congress Place. Well, always as used a to medium yeah. of communicating and impl implementing mm -hmm. the directives of the PNC. Mm -hmm. This secretariat only objective seems to be to pre uh, prevent the PNC from losing. Mm -hmm. an election and keeping them in government right. or perpetually. So the question is, why and how could such a secretariat with a partisan policy mm -hmm. be allowed to participate in an institution mm -hmm. that is responsible for implementing democracy mm -hmm. and also responsible for prescribing mm -hmm. non-partisan decisions? Okay. For a good, for the fundamental, for, for the fundamental of for good governance, and when will we understand the importance of institutional democracy and craft definitive and effective laws to determine the way certain institutions conduct our affairs? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, I just want to make a comment. Remember, uh, we had a number of elections under a PPPC government. And when that was in place, we went, as they would say, you went bending backwards to ensure we can accommodate all of the concerns of the opposition at that time. And so after the 1992 elections, you had a voter ID card, which was thrown out by this particular justice who is now the chairman of the Elections Commission. You have a number of different reforms and the introduction of scrutineers a very important provision that the government, the state, I shouldn't say the government, but the state will pay party scrutineers from the government side and from the opposite. And these scrutineers had a responsibility in law to scrutinize every aspect of preparing for elections. These included host to host registration. It included the hiring of staff. It included the training of staff. It included the selection of staff because you used to get stacks and stacks of exam uh, results from all the people who wrote. It included the manner in which you solicited staff for elections, a long list. And whatever they put on the table, the PBPC commissioners accepted because we said, while it is going to be expensive, we said, give the Elections Commission whatever they need. And so we always had elections held in a timely manner and not delayed. And so the scrutineers are an integral part. And the question being asked is, how can we take this 370,000, um, these 370,000 names and accept them because they only had one set of scrutineers there. So that's a, that's a big question. And the caller made mention about how skewed the secretary at the other arm of the commission. Well, remember what happened, right? The, the state would offer advice, legal advice to the Elections Commission. So when there was no chairman of the Elections Commission, there was a gentleman by the name of Vishnu, right? And Vishnu was the deputy chief elections officer. His contract expired. Law and field decides, because only law and field could decide this, to put a padlock on the boy's door the day after the contract expired. Put a padlock, nail up the office, right? Well, he had a right to, you know, but this guy was never told his contract was never going to be renewed. So they put a padlock on the door. Subsequently, we had a unilateral appointment of a chairperson of elections commission. And that unilateral appointment, I can say definitively, we had an illegal appointment of a chairman of the elections commission in James Patterson, the dishonorable um, James Patterson. And so he said, he had to make the decision with respect to Ban, um, Vishnu. And Vishnu um, got thrown out, and this lady, uh, Myers, came in, right? Um, not only Vishnu, but throughout the 
the um, secretariat, you had this bias creeping in. Bias in favor of people who a certain section of GCOM wanted to hire, right? And thrown out the window was all this issue of scrutiny. So I just want to make that clear to whoever. So we have an uphill task. Uphill, yes. Impossible, no. Back to the cause. Hi, good evening. Sorry. Yes. So, um, hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening, Mr. Nadir. Yes. Good evening. How are you doing, buddy? All is well, man. Okay. Um, I would like to know, like, how they have the 18th of this month. Mm -hmm. the, um, it will, the country will run to a constitutional crisis. The country in a crisis since March the 21st. Yes. Um, secondly, is it the CARICOM still in this country? Yes, CARICOM still in here and very silent. Yeah, because I'm not hearing anything from the CARICOM because yeah. the CARICOM support had a big, have a big part to play with this election. You know, they, they are so silent that you, you don't even know how you want to leave this still in this country. Yeah, you're right. You know, because... Yeah. Um, but I will say something. In the last two weeks, they made a very important statement, and that was a statement on the shootings in Texas. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, but um, this is we be in Guyana, right? Of course. Yeah. Um, thirdly, I don't think that the present government want the election. Mm -hmm. They don't need an election. They only go in and on the air and say that they want election and they want all the election. If you want an all election, election could be held since March. Exactly. But they don't want the election. Exactly. They're afraid. They're afraid because their own supporter would not support them now. Mm -hmm. And I wish Mr. Irfan Ali, I wish him all the best to be the president, next president for Guyana. Thank you very much. Okay, so calls are, the lines are open again. We just have about uh, 10 minutes remaining on the program. I know I spoke a lot tonight, but uh, and part of that was to listen back to His Excellency President Barack Jagdeo. Good evening. I just called to praise, praise the effectiveness of your, your, um, your program. Thank you, sir. As June, um, about a month ago, I called to tell you about the streets in Eckers mm -hmm. and how it was, um, how the one grade and so on. Mm -hmm. Happened to see the in Yubani Avenue, they mm -hmm. already put bitumen and so on. Okay, great. And then um, they are also great the the street, the, the main street, mm -hmm. which is very good. Now the program is very effective. What I would like them to do now is start um, open this um, health center. Mm -hmm. As over two years now, we hearing it <laughs> it um the it, it working on. But we're not getting no progress. Okay, I, I know they had a lot of issues with the contractor and the roof and substandard work and so, right? But um, yes, they got to move ahead with it. Okay. But so keep calling, keep listening, and let's keep propagating for fairness. Okay, then. Thank you. Great. Hi, good evening. <laughs> oh, wow. I think that person doesn't like their own ear. So. Keep the volume down. If you want to irritate me, do it after. Don't irritate everybody because you want to irritate me. So I can't understand a person will see the sign and then still have the volume of the TV up so loud so no one can hear. Good? Yes, so this issue of elections, we have to keep pressing, pressing. You know what? All of you who are calling in and who feel strongly that Regardless if you have uh, two bad choices and you have to make a choice, just think think that if the PPP had 23 years and took 23 years to do some of the things you don't like, these guys had 23 months and start doing some of the worst things we ever seen. Hi, good evening. Well, I turn. Good evening. Right. Um, Time to turn on the TV. I just called to find out. Yes. I heard Minister Hastings uh -huh. made a statement tonight that her government is honoring the constitution and the rules 
and Lords of Guyana, mm. but not like the PVP who is the Sony. Mm. That's what you said tonight. <laughs> but I, I don't expect much better from Don his things. Right. Well, remember remember she was the one after they had the protest in front of the GCOM, she says, We are a sovereign nation and no and no court could tell us what to do. You gotta turn on the volume, right? So so Don Hastings, the Honorable Minister, did say a couple of months ago, regardless of what the CCJ rule is, a sovereign country and they can't tell you what to do. Don, I'm ashamed of you. Having sat in Parliament with you for quite a few years, I thought better of you, right? Okay, folks, so we have just about six minutes remaining on the program. Let's take some quick calls. Keep the volume down so we can get as many callers as possible in. And the WhatsApp are also available. So we started this whole program with uh, President Jagdeo's opening statement that is September 12th press conference, we saw the PNC having a meeting with GCOM and they were say, accusing Jagdeo of pushing for elections when in fact the constitution demanded elections within three months of a no confidence motion. And that we are still waiting to see. I have been maintaining that regardless, regardless of what the current government is doing. While we know it's an uphill task to root them out, it's not impossible and it requires actions and legal actions on the part of all of us obeying the laws and pressing them to have elections. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good night, Mr. Nazar. Uh, just an observation. I came with um, Cooper Airlines from Panama. Cooper, huh? And 50% of the passengers were Haitians. Right. When they landed at Chadir, Jagan Airport, they didn't undergo the normal procedure that they, when yeah, they passengers put, come in, they, put they bypass a... that and they were there and they had minimal baggage, they had a leader and they were well organized, they had to pick them up. Mm -hmm. So most likely they are not being registered as um, incoming passengers. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, we don't know what's happening there, but um, we have to be vigilant. Uh, when this preliminary list of electors comes out. We're going to be hitting the ground with a number of people checking all those names, right? So you have to join us in the exercise of checking every single name that's going to be on that preliminary list, right? So we're going to be coming, we're going to be swamping this entire country with volunteers who will per peruse that first list that comes out. And then there'll be a claims and objections period, and then there'll be a revised list, and then there'll be a final list, right? Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, Mr. Masur. Go ahead. The, the march with the list, mm -hmm. is that still uh, valid? Well, our, our, our commissioners from the PPPC, we are still arguing that you can't merge and later, if you listen, if you listen back to President Jack Dio's full press conference, we're saying that the law provides for you to add onto the existing list, not merge. So you have to check, right? Yeah, but will there be a house, a house verification before them, that list could be merged? But they're supposed to be, and that's what the and Chief Justice says. The, the Chief Justice would allow the chairman would allow. Such a merge with an unverified Which I, I don't know if it was her words two weeks ago that says merge, or if it was some staffer in the elections commission who don't know the difference between merging and cross referencing. Oh, one more thing I want to ask you. What authority does chairman have over the secretariat? Is she, could she discipline that secretariat? Could she fire people from that secretariat? The who commission the has to do it, not the chairman singularly. The commission. Right? The seven, the seven. The seven, yes. But in, in, in the in the event of the, the secretariat going rogue uh -huh. or in favor or bias in favor of the PNC, mm -hmm. what disciplinary action could be taken? Well again, you have to convene that commission and then she is going to be put in a position tree tree and having to make decisions. But yeah, I would make recommendations. We are doing that we are doing that every of. single meeting. Every single meeting we are raising the concerns. Are still behaving in that manner? But she's she's, she's being manner? very cautious and listening to all sides and I'm sure like as she did this last two weeks, came down on the side, end this house to house registration and let us 
move on with some cross-referencing and then move to our claims and objections. Uh, right, sir, thanks, Thank you very much. Okay, we can take one call or more as the time is now winding down to two minutes before the end of the program. And again, this is something we have to keep speaking about, speaking about, speaking about because of the amount of misinformation that is being peddled by the state media and by the coalition administration, right? So we're going to have to keep speaking about the issues and giving you the facts and telling you what the law is and so forth. And so while we may be repetitive week after week, it's necessary because of the amount of misinformation that keeps coming down, especially by the government and their abuse of the state media. Uh, people who we've said have little shame, um, you know, look at what's happening. President Granger, or dear beloved President Granger, can easily say to his people, look, let's do the decent thing for once in our life, right? We have to be forced out, um, into or called out, as they normally would say. We have to be called out in 1992. It took two years, but the people still vote us out. Come on, let me do the decent thing. Don't let me take another two years. Let me give the people proper elections, and whatever is the decision of the people in the ballot box, we abide by. So on behalf of all of us here at MTV, uh, we want to say thanks again for participating in our program and to wish you and yours a very good night. Thank you very much.